Picture this, you're a Russian tank fighter fighting the Axis in World War II. You were deployed in a convoy to travel during the night. There's only one problem. The T-34 has horrid visibility, so it can hardly see what's going on. Naturally, being that the T-34 did not have a radio and it often follows anything resembling a tank, next thing you know, the tank in front of you has turned its barrel towards you and you were blown to pieces. What could have solved this? Convoy lights. Since the beginning of armoured vehicle combat, communications have been one of the deciding factors on the battlefield. During World War I, radio communications were not very good as they took a lot of size. Telephones were still used to speak in the trenches. With this primitive level of technology, flags were used by most nations to signal towards the later part of the war. As technology evolved, lights were implemented, although poorly. For most purposes, artillery fired illumination rounds which had parachutes attached to act as lights above the battlefield. 30 years later in World War II, radio tech has progressed even further. Every German tank has a functional radio for clear communication. Flags are still used, although just to designate position in a convoy, but the communication lights were also improved. Hooding was added to the design to make it far more difficult for planes to spot the armoured crews moving at night allowing for much better control of your presence on the battlefield. The German lights were designed by a company called Notec. Lamps were implemented in both the rear and front of tanks. Their brightness was able to be controlled and having the hoods were unable to be seen by planes. Each light had three levels of brightness, the lowest being visible from 2000 feet and the brightest 6000. The rear lights themselves were two lights per unit. Two of these units would go on the back of a tank. Due to this nature being too close to the tank, you would see a total of four lights. If you were too far away, hardly any at all. But at the perfect distance, the lights would appear as two. This allowed for good management of spacing between vehicles. Similar systems were implemented by the Allies. As we enter closer to the Cold War, almost everyone in the battlefield has high quality sensors meaning that if you can see your enemy, they can damn well see you too. Thus, lights had to be updated to not make it even more obvious where you were. Russia and China used a similar system, being their tanks were largely the same internals. Using a three color system, they are able to designate the green leading tank, yellow flanking and red rear. Their system also allows to show which direction the tank and its gun are facing. The armies in Russia and China had a system in the past to represent unit numbers, simply a light shining through a plate which had the number cut out on it. On the more updated Russian and Chinese tank guns, segmented displays are used to allow them more flexibility. NATO uses a full light system based on the German designs by Notec from World War II. Similar lights are used as night brake lights, although they have daylight brake lights too. These designs are on the majority of NATO tanks, differing slightly model to model. NATO has passed various agreements from the 1980s onwards to standardise lights for better nation cohesion. Germany and Italy specifically use a rear shield type device, a white cross with a small bowl attached and which will shine a dim light on the cross visible from a limited distance, allowing to see where the vehicle in front of you is ahead. Signal lighting has been used since the early 1930s. How will it can continue to be developed. My guess would be infrared systems that the naked eye itself cannot see, requiring onboard computers to see them. One thing is for sure though, being able to communicate with your platoon makes sure you don't get blown up following the wrong side. 